you decided to run up against, run against Ilhan. Ilhan. So tell us how you really feel about Ilhan for some that don't know your true feelings about her. Well, I think she's in on it. I think she's a globalist. I really, deep down, I think that she's a security state asset. I ask myself who got out of Somalia in the 90s. And I grew up in Minneapolis, so I'm very familiar with the Somali community. Growing up in public school, I grew up with a bunch of Somali kids um, and, and have many friends you know, growing up that, that were Somali. Um, loyal friends, good people. Um, so I'm not saying anything about Somalians in, in a general sense, but when I think about who got out of Somalia, it's the same people that we left behind in Afghanistan. They were people that helped us when we were there. Uh, and her father uh, is, is rumored to have been um, a, a rebel during the time when we took people out of Somalia. And a lot of her uh, sentiments and actions line up with that. I mean, who do, who do we think can just go to Kashmir in the middle of a, a geopolitical tinderbox that, that's happening right there and uh, beat with not only the new prime minister of, of Pakistan, but the former prime minister of Pakistan with no government clearance? with no help from the State Department. Well, first of all, it's a lie that she didn't get help from the State Department, but even with the help from the State Department in that sense, in a covert manner, that's a security state operation in many regards. And so, you know, she she poses herself as this democratic socialist or, you know, this, this socialist or far leftist, women's rights activist, racism protector, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say, whatever, you know, whatever day it is. Um, but really, they're running a scam. And I saw it, and it offended me because I'm from the community, and our representation should represent people. Um, and, and the biggest scam is, is what I saw coming down the hatch with the NBA, right? And not to go backwards, but to, to, to encapsulate and end my NBA story, my, my anxiety was really existential. My anxiety was to say that there's a global corporate community and that the NBA is a watering hole for a global corporate community. They're like the sine qua non of globalism. You were saying that back then? I, or? Oh, yeah, go pull it up. I mean, you, you pull up the Sports Illustrated articles. I'm saying this is a global corporate community. This isn't just a basketball league. This is every industry in the entire world from here to Beijing represented in, in a financial interest. And when they say mental health is not important, they're saying the human condition isn't important. And it was a pretext for their partners, their corporate partners, such as big tech, to be predatory around the human psychology, to weaponize dopamine against the average person. And that is what they've done. And the NBA knew it back then, but not only the NBA, their Wall Street hedge fund co-conspirators, overlords, they knew it 20 years ago, right? And, and so, you know, that's that rightful angst that kind of gets woven in and misrepresented where it's like, oh, you're just a kid who, it's a prima donna, you want, special, you want special accommodations, you want to be treated differently than everybody, and, and that's, that's why you're asking for this, and no. No, the, the reason why I'm asking for it is much, much deeper than most people wake up in the morning, make their coffee, check the morning paper, and look at the stats, maybe bet by noon, want to deal with. And it's that absence of, of wanting to deal with it that, that, that people like Ilhan capitalize on, they exploit that. How does somebody like that get elected? Um, lies, help th from the mainstream media. Um, also, you know, the... the uh, Localized identity politics. She was sold to the average Somali that says, hey, a Somali-American, just like you, achieving this next mm -hmm. step to actually represent a constituent because there is no, yeah. uh, there's no American race the way there is a German or a French person. We're from yeah. everywhere. Didn't she almost lose like by two or 3,000 votes, Tyler? Yeah. Didn't she almost? Uh, it was a uh, close race. It was close. It was a the, close yeah, race. Primary. But that's the way they yeah. sold it. But they to your point, it. that's maybe Woman on the, the initial election, but she's been reelected how many times? Three times? No, the look. You get so like at, at some point, the people in Minneapolis, Minnesota are going to have to, all right, we either like this person or we don't. I'm no fan of Ilhan Omar, but- She's a representative. She's not a senator. The people in her district have to keep supporting her or not. Let, let's, district. Let's Go look at how thing, that district Let's get one thing drawn. straight. I just ran to become the United States congressman from our 5th congressional district. I lost in a primary by 1,000 votes to a uniparty, globalist, Republican establishment candidate. Mm -hmm. You get the government you deserve. That's the reality. You get the government you deserve. And increasingly, we 
like our politics with French fries. And Ilhan gives you everything that you need mm-hmm. to feel good about your politics with French fries. But isn't that just plain politics, Royce? Like, for instance, for you, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. you've aligned yourself with Steve Bannon. Yeah. Yes or no? Yes. So how palatable is that to the people of Minnesota? Maybe if you're in Alabama, using them as an example, hell yeah, let's get behind Steve Bannon, let's do it. Yeah. What's the, you know sentiment in minnesota a very liberal ish yeah. type state super liberal who yeah. all right or Royce, city the outstate yes is. well in <laughs> every city in america literally every major city votes blue most rural votes red not yeah. even an opinion minnesota fact. not hawaii is the most liberal state in the union minneapolis specifically but when you align yourself with steve bannon just that name alone people are gonna be like yeah i don't know about that royce white sorry about that buddy well even worse than that they don't say they don't know they go they just write it off they write me off that's my point but and I think that's so when you lose by a thousand votes, doesn't that come back to bite you in the ass? No, 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 no. See, no, absolutely not. Tell us why. Sacred honor. And I'm going to keep going back to mm-hmm. it as, as, as many times as is necessary because this is the great crisis of politics. Mm-hmm. Whatever I need to say, wherever I am to win the game is the ultimate goal. And when you play the game like that, it's kind of an American or postmodern business practice is win by any means. It, we, we have to win. We have to continue. We have to move on. We have to go upward and onward. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's egregious f- for, for morality or ethics or ideas. And that's why most people, especially in politics, have betrayed their ideas across time. Because their idea is, I need to say whatever it is that will appeal to a person to get me elected, when really your leaders, your elected officials should stand for things, things they really believe in, things that are true first and foremost, but things they really believe in, and then be able to convince you that you should believe in them. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.